Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love every Saturday. We are reading John 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Sometimes when it feels like life, this is Pat now, when it feels like life is, is snipping away at you, chipping away at you, chiseling away at you, cutting you down to size, sometimes that's God's pruning process. So always know that whatever God does or allows in our lives, he's always aiming towards growth and multiplication maturation, which is maturing. So, and getting stronger and stronger spiritually and on the inner man. Verse three, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. You shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to stop right there for a moment. And I want you to think about how abiding in Jesus is of the utmost importance. A lot of us, we go through life facing its vicissitudes, facing the challenges, facing obstacles, facing delays, cancellations, upheavals, friction, whatever you may want to call it. And a lot of us try to handle life in our own strength. We try to handle each other in our own strength. We are proud of our accomplishments. I went to school and did this, and I got that degree and the other degree, and I've got this um, a credential and that credential, and I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for 30 years and 50 years. and ah. Let me tell you, baby cakes, whatever you have learned, whatever you have done, whatever you have accomplished, it has only been by God's power. Even those of you who, who aren't even saved, God says he reigns on the just and the unjust. The sun shines on the just and the unjust. And for those of you who think that you made it on your own without God, think again. Even the breath that's in your lungs came from God. And all he has to do is inhale. Pastor Cushman used to say this. All God has to do is inhale and you will drop like a little dead fly. So don't get too big in your, in your mental thinking of how wonderful you are. Don't get caught up in your grandiose self-image. Because let me tell you, no matter what, you have learned, God gave you the mind to learn it. No matter what you have accomplished, God gave you the strength and endurance to accomplish it. No matter what you have attained, how high you moved into society, how much money you have gathered, guess what? God gave you every ability you have. He even gave you the ability to know your own name. Because all God has to do is move a finger or think a thought. And you won't know your own name if you saw it in neon lights. So what I want to share with you 
is whatever you're going through in this life, good or bad, you better stay connected, baby. See, one thing I know, I'm talking to you right now through my internet, through my computer. If I reach down and pull the plug, that would be the end of this connection. You wouldn't hear a word I'm saying. And whatever I'm trying to do to get a point across to you would fall by the wayside. Why? Because the power is cut off. Mm -hmm. And God has the power to cut off the power. So be careful how you brag on yourself. Be careful about that. And give glory, honor, and thanks to God for every ability you have, even if it's only the ability to tie your shoe. You make sure you thank God for every ability you have. Because God can make matters better and he can make matters worse. He's the one in control, not you. Whatever you do in this life, some of you are going to battle demons. Some of you are going to battle situations. Some of you are going to battle health issues. Some of you are going to battle people but what, and circumstances, whatever it is. You better make sure you got the right one on your side. I'm serious. Having God is like having night vision. Having God is like having amplification in your ears, supernatural amplification. Having God is having a shield all around you where things don't hurt like they normally would. Things don't, don't fluster you like they normally would. Things don't rattle your cage because you're connected to the vine. See, the vine is the life source. He's your power. He's your life source. He's your energy. He's your capability. Whatever you're able to do. So remember who your life source is. Don't turn your back on him because some member in your family died. Don't turn your back on him because he didn't answer your prayer the way you wanted it answered. You have to remember God is sovereign. God knows the plans he has for each and every one of us. And I know sometimes we go through seasons of death. And there are times when family members must die. And we don't like it. But it fits God's plan. It fits God's purpose. See, when you're connected to the vine, there are things you even know in advance. I knew when my husband, when his time was up. Why? God gave me a vision. I knew that Milton wanted to die. He wanted to go and be with the Lord. How did I know that? He didn't tell me. But God gave me a dream where my husband told me. When you're connected in the vine, you're more equipped to face the hardships. You're more equipped to face the, 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 the death of your family members and your close loved ones. You're equipped to handle the challenges that come with all of that, the, the disappointments in life. You're equipped to handle it. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. You're equipped to handle demonic attacks. You're equipped to handle the lies that are told on you and handle it in a godly manner. See, when you really put your trust in God, you don't hit the panic button when something rears its ugly head. Oh, no. What am I going to do now? Uh, hello. God gave me an illustration years ago, and I want to share it with you because it's a perfect way to face life, face the surprises in life. I had a, um overcomers meeting one night with some men and women in our church. and. 
we were sitting in this room where the only light source was coming through a little window up in the upper left-hand corner. And, excuse me, I uh, we were talking about light. And the Lord led me to ask one of the guys next to the light switch to turn the light out. And we were all sitting around in a circle. Now we could see each other easily because the light was on. But when that guy turned the light out, I said, now, everybody look around. What do you see? And they said, well, we see the little window, but we can't see anything in the room, right? Because it's dark. Your eyes have not had time to acclimate to the dark. Now, if somebody got up right now, I want you to hear this illustration. If somebody got up right now, picture the room being dark and you're sitting around in a circle and you can't see the people sitting across from you or barely see the one sitting next to you. So here we are in a dark room. And if you jumped up, if you hit the panic button and you went to run to open the door and you can't even tell where the door is, you can't get your bearings because it's really dark. What's the most likely thing that's going to happen next? Think about it now. You're going to trip over somebody's foot. You're going to trip over a piece of furniture, bang your leg, or fall altogether. You know what happens when people fall. A lot of crazy stuff happens. A lot of crazy injuries happen when people fall. But if you be still, and know that he is God. Keep yourself in perfect peace. Keep your mind stayed on him. Be still and pray before you move. Pray before you panic. Pray before you take action. God may tell you at that moment, wait on me. So what are you waiting for? You want to do something about the situation. It's a crisis. You're panicking. You're up in arms. You want to do something. No, wait. Sit your little happy hips down, be still, and wait on God. Why? Because God has to acclimate you. He has to equip you with night vision. So what happens when we're sitting around the circle? This was the illustration. I said, let's wait five minutes and chit-chat. And then tell me what you see. And somebody said, oh, the person across from me, they got a sweater on and something sitting in their lap. Hello, you're seeing what you didn't see five minutes ago, aren't you? Mm -hmm. We waited another few minutes. Somebody commented, oh, wow. Uh, I could tell that's brother so-and-so. It looked like he just scratched his head, right? You're seeing more now, aren't you? There's no more light coming in the room, but your eyes are acclimating to the dark. And that's what God does. He gives you night vision for those night seasons in your life. I don't know who this is for. But there's going to be some night seasons coming up in some people's lives. I don't know if they're in my, uh, in God's church of love and our church family here, or if it's going to be a, some of you on the internet or a little bit of both. I don't know. But think ahead and remember when the lights go out, when the power goes out, when things go topsy turvy, if there are deaths in the family, in your friendships, in your church family, and whatever, whatever you do, first thing, take it to God. Take those fears to God. Take the hurts to God. Take your anger to God. Take the panic. Put it in God's hands. Be still and wait on the Lord. There's a song that says, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. We must wait, wait, wait on the Lord. We must learn our lessons well. In his timing, he will tell us what to do. 
where to go, what to say. Wait on the Lord. See, when you jump up and you're, and you're leaning to your own understanding and you're emotional and reactionary and you're hitting the panic button and you're making rash emotional decisions, hasty movements, hasty choices, you're literally wreaking havoc in your own life. You don't need the devil. You're doing it all by yourself. You're doing a good job messing things up, making a mess. Mm -hmm. I remember where, just to give you an example, I remember when Milton and I first got married and we finally moved into my home because we were in his apartment the first three years of our marriage. And then we moved into my house that we had been renting out. And that was because he fell down the stairs and I didn't want that happening again. So we moved in them into my house. This is what happened. The first thing came to my mind, put Milton's name on my mortgage. We're a couple. I trusted him. He trusted me. God's, I but the first thing I did, I didn't mention it to him. I asked God about it and God said, no. Plain as day, no. And I wondered why. I was like, he's trustworthy. Why? But I obeyed God. As a result, when the real estate crash hit, listen to this, when, instead of leaning to my own understanding and going with my adoring heart, loving my husband and trusting him, I trusted God more than I trusted my own judgment. So what I did was I waited. He said, don't do it. I didn't. And as a result, when the real estate crash hit, <clears throat> my credit that was in the mid 700s crashed down to the 60s, the low 600s, six, because my house went into foreclosure. Why? Because the finances were there. Everybody was suffering with, with lack of finances. That was like a whole thing going on with society as a whole. And we were all suffering from bad credit and everything else. So what ended up happening? When God said, it's time for you to move and I will choose your inheritance for you. I asked the Lord, pick the house. You know what Milton wants. You know what I want. I went down the litany and gave a detailed uh, depiction of what he wanted and what I wanted. And we got everything we wanted. Because God led me to this house. And listen, because Milton's credit was high while mine was low, we were able to get the house at the lowest interest rate, 4%. But had I disobeyed God, listen, the interest rates would have been high because Milton's credit would have gone down right along with mine because his name would have been on the mortgage on the house, the property. You hear what I'm saying? So God's wisdom is higher than ours. His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. So there are times when your mind says, I got to do this or I got to do that. No, I don't care what the crisis is. The first thing you do is consult with God. There are going to be some crazy things happening. You hear me? There are going to be some crazy crazy things going on. And some of us will be affected and some of us, I pray to God on one of those that will be immune. But the bottom line is some of us will be blessed in the middle of other people's crisis. That's the way life goes. But the bottom line is wait on the Lord. Be still. Stay in the vine. Stay connected. Don't listen to what your neighbor says down the street. Don't listen to the gossip around the corner on YouTube, all the little panic buttons they push that has you all up in arms. What's coming next? Oh, no. Uh-uh. You consult with God, and he will lead you every step of the way. So no matter what happens, you know you are in the center of God's will. And at the center of God's will is the safest place you can be. I'm going to share a story from the Bible. 
that talks about being right smack dab in the center of God's will, obeying him to the T, and still the enemy rises up against. Watch this. Watch this. Listen. Picture this. Moses, he leads the Israelites right to the shoreline because he's following where God tells them to go. But there's nothing in front of them but this big sea. And what's behind them? A hot pursuit. His enemy, Pharaoh and his army. Hot pursuit. What does God do? Right? Because they're praying to God. What does God do? He puts up a hedge of protection in the form of a pillar of fire. So even though they have eye contact, they can see each other. The enemy cannot come on to them at all. Can't even approach them. Can't come close because of the fire God set between them. Big old firewall. <laughs> Let's put it like that. But there's an ocean in front of them. So now they're literally caught between what we call the devil and the deep blue sea. Where do you run to? Where do you hide? But you look up and you pray. And guess what happens? God has Moses stick his little rickety stick over the ocean, over that sea and the waters part. And God makes a way where there is no way. He does that to us all the time. And he will have the Israelites crossing over on dry land. Sand ain't even wet. It's not even damp. It's dry, bone dry. So they're able to carry their horses, their donkeys, their wagons, their, all the stuff, the crates. They're able to carry everything and walk across on dry land, crossing over to the other side. Now, he was right in the center of God's will. God's not going to leave him stuck between the devil and the deep blue sea. God made a way where there was no way. You have no need to panic when your back is up against the wall. God will remove the wall, baby, and you can keep on trucking. Now, check this out. Here we are in the center of God's will. But what does God do? It's like, Lord, what are you doing? What are you doing? Wait, wait, wait. He doesn't need your advice. He's sovereign. He knows what he's doing. So what happens? He lowers, he takes away the hedge of protection. They don't know he's laying in wait for the enemy. So he removes the fire, knowing that the dingbats are going to follow him, follow the, his people in, across that dry sand to get to the Israelites to bring them back into slavery. And what does God do? He's like, come on into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. And here come the little dummies crossing over. We're going to get them, get them, get them, get them. And they get right smack dab in the middle of the sea. And the Lord speaks and boom, the water's crashing together and all of them are drowned. And God tells him ahead of time, the enemy that you see today, you will see them no more forever. And I say that to you. The enemy you see today, you will see them no more forever. No matter what they're rising up against you, you stay in God's palm. You stay in his hands. You stay under his care. You stay in the ark of safety. You stay in his word. You stay in prayer. Why? Because God will cover you. He will make a way where there is no way. And he will handle your enemies, your, your, your challenges, the vicissitudes of life. He will handle your heart. When, when your loved ones have to go home, he will handle your mind. He will keep you in perfect peace. And I'm going to end with this one. When my father died, and I kissed him on his forehead as he drew his last breath. Didn't know that was going to be his last breath, y'all. But I knew he was dying. So what happens? His eyes pop open, go in a complete circle. They look like doll baby eyes. 
I didn't realize that was because the pupils open up so wide when a person's spirit leaves their body and they're gone. So as time goes on that night, we fast forward to the pastor being called and boom, they, the church members, some of the church members come over, they pray for me. And while they're praying for me, Sister Anna Mae Young, I asked her to pray specifically that God would stop the flashbacks of seeing my father die and that he would help me get the mourning over all at once. And my sister and my niece took me to an all-night restaurant afterwards, and we just sat there, and I'm talking and joking about Pop, and I'm laughing and laughing, and all of a sudden, the dam broke in me, and I'm gushing with crying and emotional pain, and I'm crying, 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 and after about an hour and a half of doing that, it was gone, y'all. All the morning was gone. Mission accomplished. I led my father to the Lord. I did not want to mourn that. I knew it was his time. I wanted to celebrate what God had done during that last year of us being together and me taking care of him. So God had me in such perfect peace. Listen to this. We were sitting there at, at uh, Loma Alta Park watching the sunrise. And as we were watching the sunrise, because we were up all night, I felt like I was suspended in outer space, y'all. See, when God has you, life doesn't have to hurt you like that. Death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? There is no sting. There is no victory because God is the victor. And you're the winner as long as you're in his hands. So here I am sitting at Loma Alta Park, and I felt like somebody floating in outer space amongst the stars. Everything in my heart, everything in my mind, everything in my emotions was perfectly still, like a complete flat line. I couldn't believe that I was finally experiencing that peace. I already had the peace from being saved, but that peace that passes all understanding, it, that kind of peace doesn't make sense, y'all. Not when you're in the middle of a death, of a crisis like that. God will keep you in perfect peace. Will you remain there or will you jump out of his hand so you can have your hissy fits, so you can cry them crocodile tears because you like drama? Mm hmm. Think about that. But whatever you do, stay in God's care, stay in God's word, stay connected to the vine. Only through him can you deal with the vicissitudes of life as painlessly as possible. Amen. Stay connected, y'all. He's your lifeline. He's your life source. He is your life saver. He is all you need, all you need. And whatever you don't have, his favor will provide for you. Amen. God bless you as you get connected and stay connected and deeply rooted with the vine. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Messiah. God bless you.